Biology session. In the previous class, we have discussed about the structure and protective features of our magnificent sense organ, the eye. I hope all of you have revised the points and the details of the description that we have discussed in the previous class. Isn't it? So today we are moving to the next topic of the chapter that is physiology of vision. Eyes are the windows of souls. The greatest beauty lies in its greatest clarity. So let's move to the physiology of our eye. Many people believe that humans simply see what is around them. However, internal images are the product of an extraordinary amount of processing of brain. So how the brain processes all these things? With the help of the impulses they receive from the photoreceptors. Which are the photoreceptors? They are the rods and cones. So in the last class also we have discussed some details about the roads as well as the cones. So today in order to understand the physiology of vision we need to study a little bit related to the cones as well as the roads. So this is a diagram showing the arrangement of cones and roads in our retina. This is actually the real image, microscopic image of cone cell which is having a conical shape and small in size when compared to the road cell. The road cells are large or cylindrical shaped cell which is larger than the cone cell. So here you can see the roads and two small cone cells in between. So this is a typical arrangement of photoreceptors in our eye. The roads and cones are arranged in a mixed way. All are connected to the specialized nerve cell which carry the impulse to the major nerve called optic nerve. So this is the original view of or the microscopic view of our layers in eye. The first layer as you see here it is the choroid highly vascular layer which provide blood and nutrients to the that is oxygen and nutrients to the tissues of the eye. In between the retina and choroid there is a thin line passing through that is an epithelium. You know most of our body is covered with the epithelium. Epithelium means just like a covering. Below that we can see the array of arrangement of the roads as well as the cone cells. So here you can see the arrangement of cones as well as roads. Now let's see the features of road cells. The visual pigment present is rhodopsin. And it is formed from a protein called retinal and opsin which is a derivative of vitamin A. They are activated even in dim light. So the major points are the pigment is rhodopsin formed from protein called retinal and opsin. And here it is having a relation with vitamin A. Vitamin A helps in the synthesizing of the rhodopsin. And they are activated even in dim light. Only little light is needed for the activation of the road cell. So here you can see the simple diagram of road as well as cone. Elongated cell is the road cell. And conical shaped small cell is the cone. So let's see the features of cone cells. The visual pigment present in cone cell are photopsin and they are formed from a protein named retinal and opsin. So there you may be wondering that there also you have studied retinal and opsin and here in the photopsin also you are uh, 
studying the same point that is retinal and opsin even if the name is same for both the visual pigment rhodopsin and photopsin there is a slight change in composition so the basic molecule of retinal and opsin is protein proteins are the basic components of these two substances retinal and opsin as we studied in our ninth standard the building blocks of proteins are amino acid when we take the entire living world there are 21 type of amino acids amino acids are made up of carbon hydrogen nitrogen oxygen then some may have sulfur and other elements so this 21 amino acid combined in different pattern to form a particular protein here one example i am saying if the amino acid has the name a b c and d four types of amino acid here i am choosing for giving the explanation a b c and d are four names of four different amino acid all together we have 21 but here i am saying only few in order to understand the concept so a b c d are the four names of amino acid if they combined in a pattern say for example a b c d there form a protein called melanin what is melanin a pigment which is seen in the cells especially on the hair and on the skin and on the iris isn't it so what is the function of melanin to give a blackish color or a darker tone and the darker tone must have a property for absorbing light in order to tolerate the intense ray of light and all that's why the god has given a black color to our hair so now you are thinking that some people are having white hair isn't it the westerns or european according to the climatic condition they may vary so people who are living in colder climatic conditions having less melanin why because there is less light in their surrounding so in colder countries 6 months summer and 6 months winter and they are not receiving the summer as we are receiving there is no so much intense hot so people who are living near the equator receive maximum amount of sunlight so god has given a darker shade to them in order to withstand and tolerate the huge amount of or the intense amount of sun rays so the melanin the arrangement is a b c d similarly if the pattern changes a c b d there will be another protein another protein we can give an example of hemoglobin where it is present in the blood cell that is in rbc there they have to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide there the function differ if it is arranged a d b c another pattern they may be showing the property of another protein molecule similarly here also the opsin and retinal will be same but the inner composition the arrangement of amino acid in the particular protein may vary which gives a different property and different function i hope now it is clear the retinal and opsin both are present in photopsin and rhodopsin but the difference is that the arrangement of amino acid inside the uh, retinal and opsin may differ in both the pigments which cause the differences in its property as well as its function there are three types of cone cells in our eye which help us to detect three primary colors of light that is red green and blue this diversity is due to 
the difference in amino acids in the opsin molecule there also you can see due to difference in amino acid in opsin molecule the diversity that means the red green and blue types of receptors cone cells are seen in our retina so rods are only one type whereas cones are of three types and how the diversity is possible with the help of difference in amino acid in opsin molecule so here you can see a simple diagram showing the cone as well as the rod here a disc like portion is there where the bunch of proteins are arranged which protein the visual pigments so visual pigments are arranged on the upper part of the receptors which receive the light rays which are focusing on the retina now let's see the chemistry of visual pigments as we discussed rhodopsin is made up of two components called retinal and opsin during bright light what happens this rhodopsin gets split up into retinal and opsin during dim light they combine to form an active substance called rhodopsin so this is the active form and this is the inactive form when thinking of the photopsin it is also made up of two types of protein retinal and opsin but the difference is that during bright light they split up into retinal and opsin which is the active form and during dim light they combine to form photopsin which is an inactive form so that is the major difference the components are almost same and the situation is almost same in bright and dim light and the difference is that here rhodopsin is active form and here retinal and opsin is the active form how is it possible there are three types of opsin molecules for red shades for green shades and for blue shades then only they will able to perceive the light and enables the correct color with the help of brain how are impulses formed in photoreceptors to make vision possible so what is the role of photoreceptors in producing the impulses in the presence of light the pigments present in photoreceptors dissociate so here the light is the stimulus here the light is the stimulus and the pigment is receiving the light and what happens to them they dissociate dissociate means splitting up this chemical change leads to formation of impulses so when the receptors pigments dissociate it causes an abnormal change which result in the formation or generation of impulses as a result these impulses are transmitted to cerebrum through optic nerve so i repeat the sequence as soon as the light is received by the pigments they dissociate as a result chemical changes occurs which is carried in the form of impulses transmitted to optic nerve and it is sent to cerebrum in this way we are seeing the object or this enables the vision this is very very important what is the role of photoreceptors in vision is the photoreceptors alone is required for vision no with the help of brain we can the vision is possible so all the points are included in this question how the impulses are formed in photoreceptors to make the vision possible now let's see the peculiarity of our lens our lens is elastic it is transparent 
crystalline made of protein and able to alter its curvature and help to focus the light on retina so lens is just like a capsule like structure you might have seen the cod liver oil isn't it the cod liver oil the fish oil which we consume in the form of a capsule similarly the lens is in the form of a capsule with a uh, so many layers and it is elastic in nature and transparent to the allows the light rays to pass through able to change its curvature alter means to change its curvature the curvness can be changed by stretching and contracting so that it can focus light on retina now let's see the feature of our lens the first one is power of accommodation how can we accommodate accommodate means to adjust okay so ability of the eye to adjust the focal length of lens by changing its curvature in accordance to the distance of the object from the eye and form the image on retina is called the power of accommodation of the eye get bored up or get confused don't worry i'll make it easy for you what is power of accommodation that is we are going to discuss now power of accommodation means ability of our eye to adjust the focal length of lens so it is the peculiarity or it's a unique feature of human eye to adjust the focal length of lens what is focal length the length of the distance between the lens and the object so according to the distance between the lens and the object the lens can change its curvature change its curvature means the curvness the c shaped part is called a curvness this shape is known as curvness this can be changed by stretching and contracting the shape of lens so that it can adjust the focal length so it is the ability of our eye to adjust the focal length of lens thereby changing its curvature according to what according to the distance of the object from the eye so that the image is formed on the retina so what the lens is trying to do the lens is trying to focus the image on retina how they able to do the function or how they succeed in doing its property by adjusting the focal length by changing its curvature now it's clear so the ability of our eye to adjust the focal length focal length of the lens by changing its curvature according to the distance of the object from the eye so that the image is formed on retina this is called power of accommodation of eye so in this picture you can see the two different situation in the first picture the lens is very thin and elongated so obviously they are viewing try to view the distant object but in the second picture you can see that the lens is thick in nature and having more curved surface so this is the curvature this bracket like structure is the curvature on the both side they are curved shape so as they decrease in its length the thickness increases and at the same time the curvature increases so let's compare the two picture in the first picture it is elongated in the second picture it is contracted in the first picture the thickness is less in the second picture the thickness is high or we can say that thin and thick that curvature decreases here curvature increases 
and what is the situation behind the two process here viewing a distant object here viewing a nearby object so when we view a distant object the lens got relaxed it is elongated and get relaxed but when we view a near or closer object the lens becomes small in size contracted way so that it become it is under a stress condition that's why the importance of reading books by keeping it in a adequate distance similarly while watching the tv or any mobile or other gadgets computer monitor etc we have to sit in adequate distance in order to give a less stress to the lens is it clear so based on this property the microscope and telescope has designed in such a way that the image is viewed in a distant way that's why the eye is most relaxed when viewing distant object that's why the microscope and telescope are designed to produce distant images so lens is more powerful while it is converging and when we view a near object so the eye produces a real image on the retina by adjusting its focal length and the power in a process called accommodation for close vision the eye is fully accommodated and has its greatest power whereas for distant vision it is totally relaxed and its smaller power so accommodation means ability of the eye to adjust its focal length here also you can see the difference object at infinity means distant object and nearby object so in the distant object the lens is thin in nature elongated and the curvature is very less so that the image is formed on the retina itself when we view near object what happens the lens become contracted small in size thickness increases curvature increases so that the image is focused on the retina itself is it clear now let's see another property of human eye that is binocular vision how many eyes do we have yes two eyes isn't it so both the eyes have all these structures the layers are there the lens is there all the features are present in both the eyes separately so obviously the optic nerve are of two in number from the right and left but where they meet they meet at a place near the brain and from the right eye they carry the message to the left part of the brain and from the left eye they carry a message to the right part of the brain and which part of the brain the visual area of the brain so optic nerve has got connected with the visual part of our brain in order to decode all the fine details of the object that we are viewing so binocular vision means with the help of two eyes all the details even if it is a minute detail we can decode with the help of the brain for that our eye is placed on the front part of the face itself so when you observe some animals like cattle cow sheep then other animals like dog then uh, birds you can see that the eyes are slightly shifted to the sides of the face but when we observe the human face you can see that the eyes are placed on the 
front part of our face itself both the eyes are on the same plane and the peculiarity is that we can focus the object so that both the eyes transfer the details of the image into the brain and brain decodes the details of the object the shape size depth all the three dimensional view of the object in a very precise way so that property is known as binocular vision so peculiarity of binocular vision it gives a wider field of view it gives a precise depth perception it helps to perform skills such as catching grasping and locomotion so all the uh, motion related activities we need both of our eye it allows humans to walk over and around obstacles at greater speed and with more assurance the best example is the hurdles when you observe the hurdle race you can see that very easily and tactfully the athlete has overcome each hurdles which is placed on the track isn't it how is it possible with yes of course with definite practice as well as with more precision where he or she have to jump over that distance is calculated with the help of two eyes which is decoded by the brain so that the brain will give message to the muscles to lift over the legs when they meet the hurdle point not at all the hurdles in the day to day life also we are experiencing so many activities one example when you walk or move around if there is any obstacle in front you give way and move to the next track how is it possible with the help of your binocular vision simply in the inside your house itself when you walk around if you find a stool or a chair or a table suddenly what will happen you will move your track and escape from the edges of the chair or the table whatever sometimes if you don't see and get stumbled with the corners of the chair or with the table why is it happen because you are not seeing the thing or you are thinking something else multitasking will be going on your brain so that your brain is less concentrated on viewing the decoding the obstacle which is uh, in front of you that's why you get uh, some accidents when you hit on the edges of tables or chairs okay is it clear so peculiarity of binocular vision it give a wider field of view precise depth and perception perform skills such as catching grasping and locomotion allows humans to walk over the around the obstacles at a greater speed and with more assurance assurance means confidently we can jump over so these are the functional areas of human brain the visual centers are of divided into two secondary visual area and primary visual area where all the processing are finalized so that it enables the vision okay so many people believe that humans simply see what is around them however internal images are the products of an extraordinary amount of processing of brain so this processing can be fulfilled only if the impulses are transmitted from receptors to brain so both the eye as well as the brain play a crucial role in enabling the vision what happens when the light rays of the object falls on our eye let's see the diagram here here you can see the light rays from the object falls on the cornea so the first part which receive the light rays is cornea then it pass to the next part of our eye that is which part yes aqueous humor then from aqueous humor it moves to the pupil from pupil it gets into the lens 
and from lens it moves to the next part of our eye that is vitreous humor from vitreous humor the light rays get focused on the retina so this is the diagram showing the pathway of light rays in the eye so this is the flow chart showing the pathway of light rays through various parts of our eye first of all light is the stimulus which enter into the cornea later they move to pupil then to lens after passing the lens the light reaches vitreous chamber from vitreous chamber they reach the retina inside the retina there are photoreceptors so stimulate the photoreceptors generating the impulse so that the impulse is carried by the optic nerve to the cerebrum that is in the brain and in this way the sense of sight is possible so light enters the cornea then pupil lens vitreous chamber retina stimulation of receptors in retina generation of impulse carried by optic nerve to brain and finally sense of sight so here we can see that the light rays pass through several layers of material such as cornea aqueous humor several layers in the lens the vitreous humor changing direction at each interface so an image is formed on retina with light rays converging most at the cornea and upon the entering and exiting the lens rays from the top and bottom of the object are traced and produce an inverted real image on the retina so the characteristics of image on retina are small inverted and real for easy recollection you can use the code sir s i r s for small image i stands for inverted and r for real image do you ever think why the image formed in retina is small in size an image is formed on the retina with light rays converging most at the cornea and upon entering then exiting the lens rays from the top and bottom of the object are traced and produces an inverted real image on the retina the distance to the object is drawn smaller than scale is the image formed on the retina real fortunately the image is real image form by the actual convergence of light rays at a point in space vision is dependent upon the stimulation of nerve impulses by an incoming light ray so only real images would be capable of producing such a stimulation then why the image formed in the retina inverted it is because the front part of the eye is curved isn't it it bends the light creating an upside down image on retina the brain eventually turns the image right way up the retina is complex part of the eye and its job is to turn the light into signals about images that the brain can understand what is the role of brain in decoding the images according to the new research in the scientific field it reveals that the visual attention affects the activity in specific brain cells so it increases the efficiency of signaling the cerebral cortex and boosts the ratio of signal over noise 
that's why the importance of reading the books writing and reading then studying or learning the facts using images so there also the importance of drawing comes so visual learning have more created more impact on storing the memory in the brain now let's see what is the range of vision of normal human eye the healthy or visual acuity to be 20 20 vision that simply means that you can clearly see something 20 feet away that you should be able to see from that distance how do we see 3d vision or three dimension vision 3d imaging is as simple as producing two slightly different images the same as your eyes would produce and then showing each eye only one of those images this can be done with light refraction color filtering and light polarization so we can see the actual depth of each object which is decoding with the help of our brain so dear students in this module we have discussed how the eye perform its function and the role of brain in enabling the process of vision so both the receptors and the parts of the eye along with the brain gives a perfect vision so here i am concluding thank you